1994, Prop 187 tried to stop immigrants living in California illegally from getting health care, public education, and other social services, but the courts deemed it unconstitutional and it never really went into effect. Joining me with the legacy and local impact of Prop 87 are San Diego Assemblywoman Lorena Gonzalez and Isidro Ortiz, professor of Chicana and Chicano Studies at San Diego State University. Welcome. And Isidro, how did Prop 187 187 actually come about and who was pushing it forward? Uh, 187 came out of the battles over immigration that began in the 70s and continued into the 90s. The Republican Party was behind Prop 187, and in particular, then Governor Pete Wilson championed it and rode it to re-election in 1994. So was the, maybe, uh, was the push behind it actually, do you think it was a political one for re-election? <clears throat> there was a lot of politics involved. The Democrats and the Republicans had been battling over immigration, and the Republicans thought they had found a, an issue, of what they called a wedge issue, that could help them win elections. No, it never really went into effect. It was no, deemed right. unconstitutional. Yes. But it did have an impact when it came to uh, Latino voters, correct? Yes, it politicized an entire generation of Latino voters, many of whom uh, began to vote Democratic. And ultimately, then the surge in numbers uh, and the turnout helped transform California into a safe Democratic state. Okay, and Lorena, you were influenced by Prop 187 growing up with this. How did it influence you? Well, you know, like a, a number of us actually that serve in the legislature now, we, we kind of tie our roots in political activism back to the passage of Prop 187. Many of us were in college and graduate school. And although um, we were born here, we had parents who had immigrated here, we had family members who, who may not have uh, been here legally. And it really was seen as attack not just on illegal immigration, but on an entire immigrant community. We Most of us came from blended households, from blended families, and if not, we our neighbor maybe did, um, definitely somebody in our community. And so it was really seen as an affront to our entire community, and many of us uh, decided then to go into public service. And let's jump forward 20 years to this year. How has California's approach to immigration changed? You know, it's amazing to serve in the legislature right now. This year I co-authored a um, piece of legislation to take the, the words, the meaningless words now of Prop 187 off the books. Um, but if you look at how we treat immigrants, it's been a 180 degree turn, quite frankly. We welcome immigrants. We accept the fact that they're here. We have tried to make laws and pass laws, thanks to Governor Brown, who have um, to, to embrace the fact that we need normalized relations here. We just passed driver's licenses so that immigrants could have driver's licenses. We passed the Dreamer Act. We let Dreamer law students become attorneys. So we have tried to do everything in the state to say we are all one state, one community, and we'll function And as it, such. it also, though, increased border security. Well, border security has been increased from the federal level, absolutely. I'm not sure, um, you know, a lot of times people want to talk about border security, but I don't know how many more troops you could put at the border um, to change what has happened. What we're talking about is people who live here now, people whose families live here now. You know, there may be one member of the family who, who may not have proper documentation. And rather than rip families apart, what we want to see in California and ultimately in the United States is that families stay together, they're able to work, uh, able to put food on the table, send their kids to school, School, access the American dream and not be in fear that their family is going to be torn apart by deportation. In Isidro, getting back to the political side of this, you said Prop 187 uh, mobilized uh, Latino voters, yes. but they're still not turning out in, in the largest numbers people would like here in the polls. Why do you think that is? Uh, in part, I think because there's a great disillusionment about the what has occurred at the national level. Latino voters turned out to vote for President Obama in both in 2008 and 2012, expecting that there would be significant change. Uh, and what has occurred, of course, is we've seen an increase in the deportations. So many of them have become disillusioned. And I, so, and I think many are also wondering whether the vote makes a difference. So it's going to be difficult to overcome that, to convince them that, in fact, if they turn out to vote, that it can make a difference. I think in San Diego, the case is stronger because I believe that part of why San Diego turned blue was because of the upsurge in Latino voters as a result of 187. And here, the impact of your vote can be seen a little bit stronger than is the case at the national level. A little and more immediately. Immediately, and, yes. And, and speaking of that, uh, Lorena, the, the immigration, of course, remains this hot political it's issue it's at the federal and the local level. level. President Obama is expected to do this executive uh, action on immigration. Uh, do you think that'll change things? Do you think Republicans and Democrats will be able to, to come together maybe after this and, and move this forward? Well, it doesn't look like it. It looks like Republicans are still going to fight this. In fact, <clears throat> they're threatening even a shutdown of government if he if he acts on his own. But 
it, it's something that needs to happen, and it needs to happen because it, it's not just immigration on its on its face. It's just not these families. It's our economy. It's the way we work as a nation. We know that um, even stronger here in California, but we rely on an immigrant workforce, and quite frankly, we can't continue to deport people, especially while immigration is slowed um, to the United States because as agriculture will tell you, the tourism industry will tell you, they're hurting for workers. All right, well, we're going to be obviously following this as President Obama makes his remarks. State Assembly Member Lorena Gonzalez, thank you so much. And Professor Isidro Ortiz, thank you very much as well.